What's up guys, I want to give you an update on my home PBX project. Let's get started. Alright, so it's been a little while since I've provided an update for this project. Uh, and I can tell you that just uh, the summertime and I've just been really, really busy with work and some other stuff. So I really haven't had a chance to uh, go back and uh, try and get this done. Uh, but since my last video, uh, what I ended up doing was getting the uh, Linksys device plugged in. Uh, that's the PAP2T-NA. Um, so this this device plugs into my network and then it actually has a phone jack in the back that will uh, let me plug in a regular phone. The original idea was for uh, this device to be located in my rack and then to have this phone line actually come out and drive uh, the demarcation point uh, in my basement and then that would provide line service to all of the jacks in my house. Uh, right now I have two phones uh, I have a phone in my office and then a phone, cordless phone, which is down here right now, that's usually upstairs in the kitchen. And when I had this plugged in, I ran into a little problem and this thing got really, 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 like really hot. Um, I tried it a couple times in the rack, uh, but for whatever reason, driving more than a single phone at a time just caused this thing to get really hot. Um, so I, I guess my original plan of having this drive all the phone jacks in my house is probably not going to fly right now but that's not a huge problem uh... what i'm going to do is i'm going to change gears and i'll actually just have this located upstairs uh... and this will drive the cordless phones uh... will drive actually this base unit and there are like four other uh... base units that i have around the house so this will be okay uh... and then i will have uh... i'm going to replace the phone in my office with an IP telephone. Uh, an IP telephone is like a regular phone except that instead of using a standard um, uh, phone cable it actually will plug into my network uh, using a network cable. Uh, so I'll have to find some time to, uh, to find an IP phone. I could probably find one relatively cheap maybe on eBay or somewhere local. Uh, so that'll be another video sometime in the future. Sorry about the bad lighting here, but I wanted to show you the uh, phone uh, demarcation point. Uh, this phone cable actually runs up and over into my silver rack. And then behind here, uh, this little panel here is actually wired up so that these two lines are connected. So the line coming in actually drives um, the cable that is coming underneath. And then this lines up over here, and then this drives all the lines over here on the left and then of course these are all the um, various phone cables that are run to all the jacks in my house and when I first moved in this was a big mess and I put together this uh, little piece of plywood on some L brackets uh, to clean it up and of course I, I put the, uh, the block in. There are a couple of other sort of configuration things that I still need to do. Um, the PBX software itself uh, has a web interface where you can go in and uh, configure your system so you can plug in your um, in my case my uh, Google Voice uh, telephone number and all that sort of stuff and also configure uh, this as an extension so that this will work uh, this also has a web interface as well that you can go in and uh, you know configure this properly so that it works with your system and uh, there were a few things that I were, was trying to work out and I never sort of got around to fixing properly. Uh, number one, uh, calling out, uh, if I want to call like a local telephone number, uh, I haven't yet figured out how to just dial the seven digits just to call out. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, instead of calling like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I actually have to dial the zip code, then the actual phone number itself for it to work. Um, so that's a little bit of an annoyance and I sort of gave up because it was kind of late one evening so I need to figure out how to make that work properly. Uh, the other thing, um, sort of dialing like long distance, you typically pick up your phone and 
and, and dial one the zip code and then the seven digit number and that doesn't work properly either so I need to figure that out um, but I think those are just uh, configurations kind of stuff so I can go online and look at some forums and figure out how to do that so I don't think that's too bad of, uh, of a thing to, to work out the other thing is a little bit more of a challenge um, in a normal telephone uh, so if you get your service from like your phone company or if you have uh, your like how I have it today my cable provider also provides my phone when you pick up the phone and dial 911 uh, you get the police this setup right now you have to tell it what phone number you want dialed when someone picks up and dials 911 so what that means is is I have to do a little research and figure out uh, when I have this system put in when I dial 911 I want to make sure that I actually get the local police department and there's probably a local seven digit number that 911 sort of translates into from where I live and I need to figure out what that number is alright so let me show you the error message that we get if you don't dial a local number properly um, so I'm going to be using my trusty work phone this is a blackberry bold uh, this is a work phone which is really nice and so you get a nice dial tone and I'm going to dial my seven digits all circuits are busy now please try your call again later which is interesting so you get a all circuits are busy uh, tone now obviously uh, that's not correct because if I if I dial the the number with the extension or excuse me with the area code it does ring and then you hear in a second the blackberry now I'm turning this upside down so you don't see my number but you see that and that worked properly so it's a couple things I need to work out um, probably not a, a probably not overly difficult the uh, 911 thing is probably the most difficult but I think with a little research I can figure that part out um, and then once I have that all set up and then what I'll probably do is have the system up and running and I'll test it and make sure that everything works properly in the way that it should and once I'm satisfied then I can actually call my cable company and um, turn my service off which would be great because I'll save myself uh, about 40 bucks a month give or take so thanks everybody see you next time